In the first half of the 1950s, a show was being written, then set aside, then rewritten. Set in Edwardian England, it dealt with that most un-American of concepts, the British class system. What's perhaps most surprising is that this show was to become the ultimate product of Golden Age Broadway. My Fair Lady, as it would eventually be titled, was an adaptation of George Bernard Shaw's play Pygmalion. This is the story of how, for a bet, Professor of Phonetics Henry Higgins attempts to pass off a Cockney flower girl as a duchess. Book and lyric writer Alan J. Lerner had been educated in England. With a first-hand understanding of the British class system, he realised how he and composer Frederick Lowe could turn Shaw's play into a musical. Mary Martin, as stellar a name as Ethel Merman at the time, was asked to play Eliza Doolittle, the female lead, but Martin turned the role down. Then they happened to see an import from Shaftesbury Avenue, a comedy about the bright young things of the 1920s. In The Boyfriend was a young British singer called Julie Andrews. As Lerner recalled, she radiated an indefinable substance that is the difference between talent and star. Lerner and Lowe obviously did see something in Julie Andrews, and by casting her as Eliza Doolittle, they were delivering the ultimate snub to Mary Martin. It was almost like they were saying, we don't need you, Mary Martin. We can take an unknown and make her into a star. And that's what makes My Fair Lady so interesting. George Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion wasn't just happening on stage. In casting Julie Andrews, Lerner, Lowe and the director Moss Hart were attempting their own Pygmalion transformation in real life. Eliza Doolittle is a challenging, demanding role, and in rehearsals, Julie Andrews struggled. Her fellow performers began to notice. Co-star Rex Harrison said there wouldn't be a show unless they got rid of her. Andrews was convinced she'd be replaced. Moss Hart, however, decided on one last throw of the dramatic dice. He dismissed the cast for 48 hours and proceeded to give Miss Julie the acting lesson of her life. I E I L U. Oh, yeah. um, oh, we are proud. Did you tell him I'd come in a taxi? If this is going to achieve anything at all, Hart said to her, it's going to be hurtful and difficult. For 48 hours, he bullied, chided, encouraged, and eventually rebuilt her as a performer. You're saying it like a schoolgirl, he yelled at her. I want it angrier and louder. After two days, the character of Eliza was there. Let's take Just You White, Henry Higgins, Just You White. A television recreation from a few years later gives us a vivid impression of these dramatic days, with Julie Andrews' dialogue coach taking on the role of the persistent director. And now the fury, you hate him. White Henry Higgins. He's a bully. He's kept you up all night. Just you white, Henry Higgins. Bread and water. All right, all right. Just you white, Henry Higgins. Just you white. Good. Now. See all this story, but your tears will be too light. You'll be broken on and money Will I help you down with money Just you wait, Henry Higgins Just you wait Just you wait comes at the point where Eliza is so frustrated at the amount of bullying and misogyny she's getting from Higgins she just explodes with this wonderful torrent of vitriolic imagination Oh, oh, oh Henry Higgins Just you wait To understand what Julie Andrews had to do to get full-on Cockney, I'm honoured to be given a short lesson by the West End's leading vocal coach, Mary Hammond. There's a factor in a Cockney accent called twang that sort of slightly protects your voice. And I could hear that in her voice when she sang as well. And that was quite natural to her, I think. So is the twang like the just you wait in Riggins? Is it? Yes, it's, some people think it changes the shape of your vocal track so it makes a slightly different sound. Uh. Like that. Like that. Like that. <laughs> when she worked with her teacher on the 
uh, just your weight, Henry. I mean, uh, uh, anger. She used an awful lot of consonants so that you actually, actually, you have to watch that you don't get tense when you do that. But the ability to better spit out words, really. Actually, if you say, I'm going to get you to do it, put your hand just here where it gets a bit soft, yeah. which is where your diaphragm's connected. Say your own name. Neil Brand. Neil, say it strongly. No, to put it quite strongly here. Neil, Neil Brand. Can you feel a little push? Oh. Yes. Okay. Neil. So consonants link with supporting the voice oh. naturally. <laughs> so you try to find as many things you can do as part of a performance that come under the label of technique yeah. that your body already can do. I'm thinking about that song, of course. Just you wait, Henry Iggins. Yes. Just you. The only thing is you have to then watch that you don't divide it up so it doesn't make <laughs> any sense. <laughs> For me, this is what makes a star performance in a musical. It's not just technical singing ability, it's not just acting ability. It's the ability to fuse the two into the moment. To use the music to rise up from the text you're working from and make every single one of us in the audience feel what you're feeling. And Julie Andrews does it with such charisma. For theatre-goers who remember the 1950s, the role of Eliza will always belong to Julie Andrews. Before she was Mary, and Maria, Julie Andrews was Eliza Doolittle. Something forgotten by later generations, because when the film was made, she lost the role to Audrey Hepburn. Julie Andrews' star status was sealed on the 30th of April 1958 at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, when My Fair Lady had its London premiere with the same leads as the Broadway production. It was a glittering and regal affair. And this London run lasted for over five years, Brits loving it just as much as their American counterparts. In some ways, My Fair Lady represents the peak of the golden age of musical theatre. As the audience streamed out of here after the London opening, they must have thought musicals couldn't get any better than this. <laughs> <laughs>